today we're gonna to try something a little bit different. A lot of the work that I do around repairing pinball machines is soldering, whether it be on the back of circuit boards or whether it be soldering on a new solenoid. But so for soldering that I do at the uh, bench top, I have the uh, FX AAAD, which is a great desktop soldering iron, controlled temperature, everything works very nicely. For whenever I am uh, out fixing a mate's machine or um, under the play field and the cable is a bit you know, short or whatever it might be, or it's just cumbersome to move the Heiko around, I have this uh, Portisol Pro 2, which is effectively, it is simply a propane soldering iron. Now, it's okay, it's fine, it does the job-ish, it's a bit slow to heat up, and so I was watching some videos online of something completely different around MacBook repairs, and it came across an amazing little soldering iron called a TS100. Um, so I've gone ahead and bought one of those. It can, has the potential to be portable. And to that end, I then also bought a little chisel tip for it, which is the TSD24. So this doesn't come with a power unit at all. So you need either a little cheap brick from China with uh, up to 24 volts on it. So you can get one of those, or you can go and get yourself um, some cables. The first set of cables that I've got for this is and what is called an XT60, which is used in a lot of modeling, um, sort of drone or, or, or RC cars, driving uh, cars, um, plug, a very standard plug, an XT60, and that goes to a, a your standard DC plug, which is a five and a half by two and a half mil plug. And then I have something that can connect this up to my, um, power supply, desktop power supply, if I want to use the desktop, which is banana plugs to a female XT60. So I can literally plug these into one another from my desktop power supply. The other thing I bought was a little LiPo battery. And this is what's going to make it quite interesting. So this has is a, a 14 volt LiPo battery. There's a lithium ion battery, which I can then has the same XT60 plug in it which I can then plug and drive the soldering iron. So I'm hopeful that this can become a really good mobile soldering station. And then of course, to charge the battery, I had to go and buy myself a little cheap LiPo charger. So all of this, I'll put the prices up on the screen. I'll, I'll put the links down below. Uh, they are, they will be affiliate links. They won't cost you any more, but I'll get something like between five and 10% of whatever you spend. I will get which will go into supporting the channel but I paid full price for all of this but the first thing let's have a look at how small and nifty this little tool is okay so these are all so let's have a look they really are safety instructions important I don't think, and I'm not really going to do a full review of this. It comes with a little Allen key. So the standard tip that comes is a, a just a conical tip, very fine tip on the end, which I don't particularly like soldering with. So I've got this, the alternative, which is the TSD24, which is a chisel tip. And you can have a look at that. It is just a nice little chisel tip. Um, but you know, you can you can obviously interchange these and there's there's several different types of these to, to fit what you like. So I'm gonna put this chisel tip in. To do that, you need to just take the Allen key and I believe there are two of these. And in goes. conical tip. I'm just going to see how I want to line that up when I'm holding it. Like 
that. And so then I'll just tighten these in. Okay, so then I've, let's plug it in first to the power supply. So again, this is the XT60. This is quite a nice latex cable. And it's a meter and a half. So that goes in the back of there. Okay, now we get the XT60 female plug. Now, you could just use a power brick. That's probably the easiest, it's just using a power brick. But I want the key driver for this for me is to be portable. So, in this case, I can either plug this into the battery and I'll just plug straight into there or I can plug it into my desktop power supply if that's what I want to do and that's what I've got the use for so that's going in there and these ends just plug into the power supply Keep an eye on this as we turn it on. Let's just go to a cool 23 volts. Okay. So it says press the front's first button to start. So we're at 26 degrees. Holy crap. We are at 300 degrees according to this already so that should be that is the default temperature that this is set at um, and is soldering now you can change the default center temperatures by holding down one of the buttons and I like to put mine at 350 and that will become, it'll then go up from 300 to 350, done. I mean, that is ridiculously quick. It's a small little soldering iron. It's a really small little iron. It's got some really neat features in it, in a sense that if you leave it for a while, it will go into sleep mode. It will turn itself off. But the real valuable thing about this is now, if forget driving it on a desktop power I can drive this with a battery okay I'm doing a bit of reading of the manual which I normally don't use but you can set a variety of different things as defaults okay so to get access to the config file literally plug it in here and it will show up as a drive on your computer double click on config now standby temperature so this is the temperature if it hasn't been used for a while, it will go to. So given how quickly this heats up, I'm gonna put this at 150. These are in degrees centigrade. Um, work, working temperature, I'm gonna take that to 370. Uh, standby to idle time, to sleep time, it will go after 120 seconds. I'm gonna set it to go to revert down to that temperature. Uh, idle time and this was where it'll actually turn itself off we'll go to 360 which is again so that's two minutes and six minutes um, that's the step in which it's going to go up and down in degrees which tends to fine um, off voltage if it gets voltage of less than 10 volts it's going to turn off fair enough temperature this is where it displays centigrade or Fahrenheit zero is centigrade one is Fahrenheit hand uh, zero is right-handed one is left-handed so you can set it so whether you want to hold it like this 
or like this and you'll notice that the, the letters if you're holding it in the left hand it will flip around and be the right way around. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is just save save that file now and it's as simple as just saving the saving the file and now that will be updated. If I now unplug this plug in the power site now so this is cold room temperature I'm going to turn it on, it should go to 370 degrees. Let's see how long it takes to get there. Bang, we're at 370 degrees. That is damn quick. If you hit the left hand button, it goes in and this tells you the temperature of the iron. It's a working temperature and you can start going through here and reading all of the settings off voltage 10 volts centigrade right-handed and that's what our current voltage is so let's just have a look what it's like to solder with this uh, this is an old display pinball display unit there we go 370 degrees it really is Quite nice to solder with. Very quick, gets the temperature, maintains temperature really well. Be interesting to see how it goes against um, something that's got a lot of thermal mass, like a you know some of the bridge rectifiers or the like. But you know, it really does seem like it's quite nice to solder with. And I'm not crazy about the tip, but it's. It's not bad. So I'm pretty happy with that soldering iron all up. Now, obviously it's not as nice because it doesn't have a stand, but you can get little stands for them that are very relatively inexpensive. I'm currently using this plugged in, but again, I could be using my, my battery. Okay, so the main reason I actually bought this was not so much because it heats up fast and it's small and it's light. It was the fact I can use it in the field using a battery. So this is a you know twenty dollar battery that I've got, um, the, and I can plug it in and get the same impact as if I was using it plugged into my power supply. Maybe a little bit slower because it's 14 volts not 24 volts but look at that I mean that's already up to 370 um, that is remarkable so now I'm sitting there in the field or under a play field and I've got complete mobility of that and I think that is a hell of a lot better than using one of these which which to be honest takes a lot longer to heat up um, and is just not nearly as easy to use um, whereas this is really good so I'm really excited by it okay so to charge your battery you need a a, a LiPo now you can get these uh, this is a 4 cell known as a 4C battery you can get a 6 cell which is uh, 20 odd um, volts uh, this one uh, plugs in to your charger again you use the XT60 plugs in that's into the output um, and then you'll see that on the side it's got a negative and a positive this is a so this then plugs in here with the negative which is the black wire on the side where it says negative I don't know if there's a some sort of protection that's apparently to load balance um, and this measures this thing measures your let's take this thing off I hate these plastic things battery okay this tells me that this battery is basically 70 percent full but I can also plug this into the other side of this so now I can put this in here and then plug the banana cables into my power supply 
and I can charge this LiPo battery. Okay, so we're gonna get a charger. Oh, it's not a it's not a touch screen, but let's go to charger and let's go down. Hang on. It's a LiPo which is they charge at 4.2. Um, and I'm just gonna push charge. Okay. And off it goes, and it's literally just charging the battery so that next time I am um, out of my workstation here, um, I can literally pack the battery, pack this little soldering iron, and off I go. So, look, I, I love this. Um, I'm going to play around with it, but basically, um, I think this is a much better option than the old soldering lines. I think this is going to really, really help from a pinball repair perspective and uh, hope that you got something out of it. It's a little bit different. Um, I will put up a full price list of what I paid plus the links below, but this was like 50 bucks, 20 bucks, 40 bucks. So, you know, all in up, I think I'm up $100, $120 for all of this. And that really is, is, is not a lot. It's a, you don't need to go all the, all the way as well. You could simply rely on this plus a $20 power brick and you'd be done. If this was interesting, uh, click the like, uh, you can subscribe, you can hit the little bell so you keep getting notified. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, we'll probably be back to pinball repair.